Hey everybody, Ms. Romley here. Um, I have some ideas for you today around what you might do with your next collage. So today we're gonna check out a couple different artists that I really enjoy, and hopefully that'll give you some ideas for collage making that you can do on your own or with your family. Uh, so to collage is to glue, as we talked about earlier this year in many of our classes. Uh, it is a French word, to glue things together. Um, and if we're gonna be really fancy, we say collage. So. You can collage with your family if you like. Uh, one of my favorite artists who does collaging is a guy who goes by Mark Paper Scissors. And here's a, a video that he did to show how he works. Uh, people know me as Mark Paper Scissor. I make artwork out of paper and use scissors. And my name is Mark. I love this reverse action. <laughs> a lot of the work is straight thought to cut. There's no drawing. There's no pre-planning. It's just uh, it's just how I'm feeling, and, and, and basically I'm drawing with the scissors. Like you know, paper will just be all around me, and I can kind of pick and choose around me what the colors are. It's kind of madness. It's kind of chaos. And um, I think that kind of leads to what comes out of it in the end the, that kind of my my workspace is is chaos and what I'm doing is picking from the chaos of shapes and colors putting them in a composition that, that I like that makes me happy that I'm hoping will draw some type of emotion or feeling out of whoever's looking at it so the tools I use are simply a scissor paper and a glue stick um, sometimes I'll use a sharpie and I try to keep my tools as simple as possible I cut a lot of paper. <laughs> I cut a lot, a lot of paper and you know, thousands and thousands of, of different shapes. I really like that he uses such simple tools. So again, the, the tools he used, scissors, paper, glue stick, and sometimes a Sharpie or a black marker. The scraps and the leftovers that I don't use, um, I save all of them and I've saved them for the past eight years. I'm still happy with what I've learned by, by sticking with one thing and not straying from it. I think that's taught me a lot. What studio habit of mind do you think that that is? If he's doing the same thing over and over and over again, and he's really, really uh, trying to grow by doing the same thing over and over, to me that really says engage and persist, that he's gonna engage with the same topic of importance, with the same materials, and use them over and over again so that he can learn from it. It helped me to sit and kind of contemplate meditatively to cut, cut paper. Um, and because it was such a, you had to put so much focus on what you were doing, everything kind of disappeared. And I could, I don't know, channel my creative energy towards that one process. Every work is made up of simple shapes. They all start from simplicity and build upon that, that I think people really connect with and, and are genuinely drawn to. Uh, so not only are his shapes really simple, but if you look, if you pause in this moment, you can see that we've got really simple shapes like triangles and lines and just sort of a half circle or a crescent, Ooh, my, uh, my favorite, favorite shape. Um, but you can see that he lays them on top of each other. So he layers things on top of one another. He's got these zigzag lines that he's layering on top of the half circle that he's layering on top of another half circle that he's layering on top of uh, rectangles and triangles. So think about layering things one on top of another and think about using sim simple shapes and building them up. To something that's handmade because it's, it's special. It's, you can see the imperfections. And to some people might say, well, it's not perfect. Well, you know, to others, that imperfection is exactly what makes that thing special. I think that, in essence, it's all boiled down to the simplicity of cutting one shape, which leads to the next. Alright, um, so that is Mark Paper Scissor. Uh, with his big stack o paper. I'm going to show you a different artist who also works in a collage who also made me laugh. Um, this is Mark Bradford. Uh, Mark Bradford is uh, an incredibly well-respected um, artist who uh, does collage work and he collects his paper from all over the world. Wherever he goes, he collects paper and he talks a little bit about what that's like to bring that paper home um, in this clip. <laughs> Uh, 
I always say, well, what I need is not here. So I just have to make myself available to the universe. So I said, well, you know, look at the paper, look at the right paper. I know it when I see it. And when you turn it around, the back eyes are closed, borders collapse, languages collapse, and, you, and, and suddenly I'm sitting with this sort of paper that is so familiar to me. And then Bali. Whenever I go to a new city, I always take down. This was right before the tsunami. A month before. I, I had a whole lot of this paper. So. And when I was going through customs, the official said, Why are you bringing back trash? I said, Are you saying trash? This is art. And he said, It's trash. And I said, It's art. And he said, Well, I said, Well, can I take it home? It's trash? He said, Yeah. And I said, Well, it's trash. <laughs> so. Okay, so that is uh, Mark Bradford. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Mark Bradford, uh, you saw some of his pieces in there. Um, oh, you saw some of his pieces in there, uh, sort of in the background, um, where he's got these pieces that are, uh, you know, they're they look like they've got some writing to them and they're kind of scratched away. He's, he sands paper back a lot. Um, so that they just have like texture. He's all about this really, really interesting texture. Um, yeah. Uh, so when you are making your artwork today, um, I want you to think about, um, I want you to think about, how you're actually going to make it. You're going to collect uh, your materials, whatever you're using to put your paper together. You're going to arrange it, alter it, and rearrange it, and then you're going to attach it. Okay. So I want you to look right here. Collages can be still life, landscape, portrait, animal. They can be abstract. What do you want your collage to be? Um, words that you might use about your art. It might be colorful, soft, sharp. It might have different textures like Mark Bradford's pieces. Uh, if you want to explore some other artists that you might find out about, Ramar Bearden is another amazing collage artist. Picasso is also known, he's known for his paintings, but he's also known for his collage work, as well as George Brock, who's also another cubist, Mark Bradford that we just saw. Um, overlapping the pieces of paper is a big deal, having the paper bleed off the edge, tearing the paper, adding 3D things like buttons, adding a pop-out piece of paper, um, you know, like a pop-out book, uh, adding things like feathers or sequins or tissue paper. Um, think about adding different kinds of paper, photo, texture, uh, tissue paper. And then you can take a look at all the different things that you might look around your house to find and see if, if you could add them into what you're making. Um, so I hope you have a good time with your collage challenge. I hope that this has given you some other inspiration points for what you might add to your collage making today. Thank you so much.